When Ricardo was 10, he had an accident while jumping over a fence. He didn't notice the thin metal wire on the other side of the fence and it caused him to hit the ground head first. After the accident, he began to lose his sight. At school, he had trouble seeing what the teacher wrote on the chalkboard, so he asked to sit in the front row. After a while, he couldn't even see from there. Finally, the teacher sent him home, saying the school could not teach a blind boy. Ricardo's parents took him to many doctors, but none could help him. They said he would never see again. Ricardo was very sad. He could no longer play soccer, ride a bicycle, or play hide-and-seek with his friends. When he went outside, he could hear his old playmates making fun of him. The boys and girls thought that their jokes were harmless, they didn't know that their words were hurting Ricardo. He felt hopeless. One day, an older cousin invited Ricardo to go to a Pathfinder outing. The cousin was the leader of a Pathfinder club. Ricardo didn't want to go, but his cousin kept insisting, so he finally went. He was surprised that he could participate in many of the Pathfinder activities. 
His cousin even asked him to help out. Ricardo felt needed. He felt good. A short time later, Ricardo heard a sermon that made him want to give his heart to Jesus. But then trouble struck. At the baptismal class, the teacher asked Ricardo and the others who wanted to be baptized to memorize the Ten Commandments. But Ricardo couldn't read the Bible or the piece of paper with the Ten Commandments that the teacher passed out. He sadly thought that he would not be able to get baptized. At home, his mom encouraged him. God willing, you will get baptized, she said. During the week, his older sister read the Ten Commandments out loud to Ricardo. She read them again and again so he could memorize them. On Friday, everyone who wanted to be baptized gathered at the church. Who will be the first to recite the Ten Commandments? A church elder asked. No one else volunteered, so Ricardo raised his hand. He recited all ten perfectly. The elder was amazed and shook his hand. Turning to the others, he asked, who will recite like Ricardo? The next day on Sabbath, everyone was baptized, including Ricardo. Shortly afterward, he was invited to share the weekly mission story in Sabbath school. When some church members heard, they asked the Sabbath school leader to change his mind. Ricardo can't tell the mission story because he can't read, they said. The Sabbath school leader gently touched Ricardo on the shoulder. Do you hear what they are saying? He asked. Ricardo nodded. Show everyone what you are able to do, he said. Prepare to tell the story next Sabbath. Ricardo's sister read the mission story to him from the mission quarterly, and he easily memorized it. On Sabbath, Ricardo told the story from beginning to end. When he finished, loud and astonished amens filled the church. Today, Ricardo is a 25-year-old university student and is preparing to become a pastor. He has led a Pathfinder club for the past two years, and he preaches regularly in churches around Angola. Dozens of people have been baptized after hearing his sermons. Your generous offering will help build a school in Ricardo's hometown of Luanda, Angola. Pray that the work of the school results in others like Ricardo who are eager to teach others about Jesus. Thank you for your support of mission.
Welcome once more to our health corner. Who then is prone to suffer mental illness? Mental illnesses are no respecter of persons. The rich, the poor, married, single, female, male, child even. Even children can suffer from mental illnesses. Studies published by the American Psychological Association that looked at the prevalence by gender of different types of common mental illnesses found that women, uh, say with anxiety disorders, are more likely to internalize emotions, which result in some of these symptoms like withdrawal, loneliness, depression. Whereas men, on the other hand, are more likely to externalize emotions, which results in aggression. That's a mental illness, remember? Being impulsive, coercive, and non-compliant behavior. At this point, allow me to mention the effects of socialization and culture, especially in our society. In our culture, men have been brought up to believe they are invisible, invincible, indestructible, immune to emotions. I'm sure you will agree with me. Thus, they cannot be seen to mourn at funerals or express their needs without being considered as weak. Now, this is already creating a mental condition. Men need to know it's okay to ask for help. Men need to know it's okay to break down sometimes. They need to know it's okay to cry. It's okay to need support. And yes, it is okay for a man to be vulnerable sometimes. You don't have to be strong and acting strong even when you are feeling beaten down. It's okay for men to go for therapy. Just as it is okay for men to go to the doctor if you've got a headache, if you've got a blood pressure, it's still okay for men to go for therapy when you feel you are losing it. It's okay not to be okay. You are allowed not to be okay to have space, to have time to yourself. And yes, believe me, it's okay to talk about feelings. It's not a women thing. It actually relieves you of some of the frustrations that you would have if you don't talk about it. So, what are the possible mental health illness triggers in men? I'll start with men. I'm going to do this uh, um, in categories. So I am starting with men. Men, physical health problems can trigger mental illnesses. What do I mean by physical health problems? Disability, impotence, diabetes, chronic pain, heart diseases, all those can actually cause illnesses in men. Relationship problems, GBV, family discord, impotence. GBV, it's not heard of. Society doesn't believe men can suffer from GBV. It's always associated with women. And because of that, men suffer silently because they cannot speak about it. They cannot talk about it. Wow. Employment problems, unemployment. That's a big one. Retrenchment. 
or even promotion of these conflicts, all those can create mental illnesses, unsatisfactory remuneration. How many people have gone to work and they have come back with nothing at the end of the month? All that can cause, they are actually triggers that can cause mental health illnesses in men. Social isolation. Men don't believe in sharing. Most men, let me not generalize. Most men don't believe in sharing. And that's, it causes loneliness. Loneliness already is one of the symptoms of the mental illness. Significant change in living arrangements, such as separation. Not everyone can deal with it the same. Death of a significant other or even divorce, that can cause mental illness. Please, let's help our male partners when they are going through these things here. Realize that they might not ask for the help, but they need that help. They need that support. Pregnancy and birth of a baby, it does affect men. It's not something that just comes and it's accepted just like that. There's things called perinatal panic attacks that men suffer. All the time, they don't know what is going to happen. Somebody's a child is carrying a baby and my baby is in there. I don't know if they are going to collapse while they're sitting on the chair. Are you okay, honey? I need, do I need to take you to the hospital? Any little ish that a woman says, it actually affects men. So all those can affect men and they are triggers for mental illnesses, drug and alcohol use. Need I say more? Join me as we look at the possible triggers in mental health illnesses for women. Jerusalem, Munze Mubatu, Motu Yokala, Ambuwe Guya. Jerusalem, Munze Mubatu, Motu Yokala, Ambuwe Guya. Jerusalem, Munze Mubatu, Motu Yokala, Ambuwe Jerusalem, Munzi Mubatu, Motu Yokala, Anguwe Kuya, Bogunyi na Gulila, Jerusalem, Motu Yokala, Anguwe Kuya, Bogunyi na Gujiswa, Jerusalem, Motu Yokala. Jerusalem, Munzi Mubatu, Motu Yokala, Anguwe Kuya, Bogunyi na Gujiswa, Jerusalem, Motu Yokala, Anguwe Kuya. Jerusalem, Munzi Mubatu, Motu Lindila, Waga Bambi, Wandi Swegu, Swagu, Machari, Gilo, Anyi, Gatu, Gatangale, Ajesu. Jerusalem, Munzi Mubatu, Jerusalem, Munzi Mubatu, Motu Yokala. Oh Jerusalem, 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 Hey, 
Our message today is entitled, Hope in a World of Political Anarchy. Hope in a World of Political Anarchy. Shall we pray? Our kind Heavenly Father, as we look into your word, may it give hope to each one of your children in this world that is filled with problems, sorrows, and troubles. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope in a broken world. World War I was said to be the war to end all wars because of the great slaughter and destruction that it caused. It is estimated that over 16 million people died However, right close to its heels came World War II with well over 40 million deaths. After World War I, there was League of Nations to try and bring the nations together that there might not be war. After World War II, we have the United Nations and yet still, there is war and anarchy world over. Is there still hope for our world? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we read verse 3. For when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh unto them, as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. After one of these great wars, the world wars, a certain newspaper put an advert asking people to come with a proposal that will end war in this world. Oh, there were many dissertations that were written and they were sent as the judges spent weeks perusing, perusing the dissertations of ending war. Finally, 
they announced the winner. The winner was not at all a person who was educated, who had written a lot. No, no, no. It was an old lady. And she had written only three words. Try Jesus. I want to say my brother and my sister, if there is to be hope in this world, we are to try Jesus. The disciples of Christ. In Matthew chapter 24, as they sat on the mountain, they asked Jesus, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And this is what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 to 8. And ye shall hear of woes and rumors of woes. See that ye are not troubled. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are a beginning of sorrows. Now with such a prophecy from Jesus himself, is there hope for our broken world? Want to give you good news, my brother, and good news, my sister. There is hope for the broken world. Daniel chapter 12, and we read verse 1. At that time shall Michael arise, the great prince who has charge for your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as has never been since there was a nation. Till that time, but at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. There is hope, there is deliverance. Trouble, yes. Wars, yes. Rumors of wars, yes. Pestilences, yes. But there is hope, my brother and my sister. And that hope comes from the Lord himself. In the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 to 12. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there's none else. I am God and there's none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure declaring the end from the beginning God knows everything that is going to happen and I want to tell you God knows the end I want to say to those that accept and believe in Jesus the end is good the book of uh, Daniel chapter 2 is one of those chapters in the Bible that shows the wisdom of God, that shows that God knows the end from the beginning. One time I was selling books as a college student with my friend. When we were apprehended by the police, they took us to the police station and they said, why are you selling these books? You don't have permission to sell books. Are you indeed selling books? Yes, we are selling books. So we opened our bags and out came the book, Daniel reveals the future. And as we explained to the police, this word about Daniel chapter two, and as they saw, how history had been fulfilled according to how Daniel Nebuchadnezzar's dream 
had already said, they say, pack your bags, go and sell, because there is a God in heaven. Daniel chapter 2, we find King Nebuchadnezzar having a dream. And in his dream, he dreams a big image. But he forgets the dream. And so what does he do? Like many of us. Daniel chapter 2 verse, uh, verse 2. Then the king commanded and called the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans for to show him his dreams so that they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syria, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream and we shall show the interpretation. The king answered the Chaldeans, the thing is gone out from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made dunghills. And in verse 10, the Chaldeans asked the king before the king and said, there is not a man on earth that can show the king this matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord or ruler that has asked such a king of any magicians or astrologers or Chaldeans. And it is a rare thing that the king requires. And there is none that can show the king except the gods whose dwellings is not with the flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And their decree went that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his friends to be slain. I want to say my brother and my sister, We look for answers in wrong places even today. The astrologers are still being sought. People go to my life in these towns. I want to say my dear brother, my dear sister, all those places that we might go will not bring hope. Only hope is found in the word of God. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19 to 20. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that matter, should not a people seek their God? Should they consult the dead for the living? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not, according to this word it is because there is no light in them and so Daniel went in and uh, told Ariok who had been given the command to kill and said why is the king's decree so hasty can I be given time and where did Daniel go he went to pray. I want to say, my dear brother and my sister, prayer makes a difference. Daniel and his friends sought God. They sought answers from God. And the God of heaven, who reveals secrets, had them. This psalmist says, in Psalm 50 verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will glorify my name. Why don't you ask somebody here who might be going through a rough time. Call upon the Lord. The Lord will deliver you. 
Daniel chapter 2, verse 17 to 23. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they should desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his friends should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And Daniel said, uh, in verse 20 now, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes times and seasons. He removes the kings and he sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to him that has no understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me the desire of the king. For thou hast made known unto me the king's matter. And so Daniel went to Ariok and told Ariok, Ariok, you can take me to the king. And Ariok rushed into the king and says, I have found a man among the captives of Judah, who can be able to interpret the dream? And so Daniel was brought before the king, and the king asked him, verse 26, the king answered and said unto Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered, in the presence of the king and said the secret that the king has asked can no man astrologer, magician soothsayer show the king but there is a God in heaven I wish all kings might know I wish all politicians might know I wish all multitudes might know that there is a God in heaven, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. So Daniel went on to tell uh, Nebuchadnezzar what he had dreamt. If you go to verse 31, it tells us what he told him. Verse 31, Thou, O king, sowest and behold a great image this great image whose brightness was excellent who uh, stood before thee and the form was terrible this image's head was of gold the breast and arms of silver the belly and the thighs of brass his legs iron his feet partly iron and partly clay thou sowest till a stone was cut without human hands which smote the image at his feet that were the iron the clay and break the pieces then was the iron the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold, broken into pieces. And it became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them all away. That no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain. And filled the whole earth. Oh, I can imagine King Nebuchadnezzar saying, yes, yes, Daniel, truly 
That's the dream. That's the dream. Now tell me the interpretation. Verse 36. Daniel then begins to tell the interpretation. This is the dream. And we will tell you the interpretation thereof, O king. Thou, O king, art the king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And whosoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven hath he given into thy hands. And he hath made thee ruler over all of them. Thou art the head of gold. You can imagine how excited Nebuchadnezzar was. Thou art the head of gold. And then he goes on. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar looks down. How can this be that after me another kingdom inferior to me might come? Then he goes on and the third kingdom of brass shall bear rule and the fourth kingdom of iron. For as much as iron breaks all these kingdoms, I mean all these other metals, and as the kingdom uh, iron breaketh these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sowest the feet and the toes, part of clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but they shall be the strength of the iron, and also as it was mixed with clay, there will be clay. And as of the toes, they were part of iron and part of clay. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. My brothers, my sisters, if you go and study world civilization, if you go into history, Everything that was interpreted by Daniel has happened the way that it was interpreted. The head of gold Babylon ruled from 605 to 539 BC. The chest, silver, the Middle Persians, they ruled from 539 to 331. To 331. Uh, BC, the thighs of brass, Greece ruled from 331 to 168, and the legs of iron, this was the Roman Empire which ruled until uh, the 4th century AD. But my dear brother, my dear sister, that is not what is exciting. What is exciting is what comes after that. The stone in verse 45, for as much as thou sowest that the stone was cut out without human hands and that it break into pieces the iron, the brass, the clay and the silver and the gold. The great God has shown the king what shall come to pass hereafter. That dream is certain and the interpretation is sure. My brother and my sister, we have a sure word that the kingdom of stone is coming. Daniel chapter 2, verse 42 to 43. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be divided and partly broken. Whereas thou sowest the iron and the clay could not mingle themselves. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of man, but they will not cleave one to another. 
The ten toes represent my brother. The dividing of the Roman Empire into the nations of Europe. And there have come many that have tried to unite Europe, but they have failed. You could talk of many. One man was uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, who cried out and he said, God Almighty, thou has been too much for me. They shall not cleave one to another. Yes, we'll have the League of Nations, we'll have the United Nations, but in our unitedness there's a division also. In the book Education, page 173, we read, it says here, in the annals of history, the growth of nations the rise and fall of empires appear as dependent on the will or proneness of man. The shaping of events to a great degree to be determined by his power, ambition, and caprice. But in the word of God, the curtain is drawn aside and we behold behind, above, through all the play and counterplay of human ear, I mean interest, power and passion, the agencies of the all merciful one, silently, patiently working out the counsels of his will. Yes, my brother and my sister, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, in the days of these kings will the God of heaven set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed nor shall be left to another people it shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end and it shall stand forever this is the only kingdom that will stand forever. The kingdom of God. My brother and my sister, we are at the edge of history. We are at the very edge of eternity. The head of gold has come. It is gone. No more Babylon. Middle Persia has come and gone. Greece has come and gone. And then Rome, the, the, the legs of iron, they have come and they are gone. And now we are right down there. And the feet, the feet which were divided, partly clay and partly iron. And I want to tell you the only thing that is left is the coming of the stone, which is the second coming of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you, my brother and my sister, as truly as all these were fulfilled according to the word of God, this event of the second coming of Jesus is going to be fulfilled. This is why he taught us to pray, saying, after this manner pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This is our only hope, the blessed hope, the second coming of Jesus Christ. I want to say, my brother and my sister, every day you pray this prayer, thy kingdom come. We are sick and tired of this world, sick and tired of diseases, sick and tired of empty promises of human beings. But when the kingdom of God comes, there will be peace and tranquility in this world. This is why Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again 
and receive you, that where I am, there ye may be also. And with uh, the, 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 that, that where I am, there ye may be also. I want to say, my dear brother and my dear sister, the climax of history is yet to come. The world is not going to be destroyed by war, although there are going to be many wars. It's not going to be destroyed by pandemics. The end of the world will be there when Jesus comes. This is why the book of Revelation in chapter 22, it closes by reminding people three times in one chapter. Revelation 22 verse 1, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And in verse 12, And behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according to his work. And in verse 20, He that testifies these things say, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. I want to tell you my brother and sister, Jesus is coming. The only kingdom of peace is coming and that kingdom, you can be in it if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Shall we pray? Our kind heavenly father, may we indeed Pray thy kingdom come. May we indeed live thy kingdom come. May we indeed, Lord, prepare for the only kingdom that will last with peace and tranquility. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.